Hey guys, check out this cool finish that I created on a TV tray. Hey guys, Rhonda Draculis with RK3 Designs. I'm going to show you how you can practice and actually create something and kill two birds with one stone. So I'm always preaching to you guys to practice, practice, practice and master your craft, right? So a lot of people say, well, I get tired of practicing on sample boards and just wasting my product. So I'm gonna give you a pro tip. These little TV trays, guys, literally can be bought for about $10. They're super cute and they're almost prepped ready to go so that you can make a finish. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and we're just gonna remove the legs. Four screws and we're good to go. I'll come back, it'll be prepped, and we'll get going. All right, so the board has been prepped with two coats of the Stone Coat countertop white undercoating. We've, uh, even though the edges were already rounded over, we sanded them lightly just to give us a little bit more round over, and that way the epoxy is gonna flow a lot better. All right, so what I'm doing, I'm coming in here with some art coat. The reason we're using art coat is because it has a tremendous amount of UVA protection. All right, so I'm gonna come in with clear. And all we've kind of done is lay that down. And then I tinted a small amount with Color Obsession. It's a transparent dye. And you can find this dye at artisttilldeath.com. Check them out, they've got the coolest products and Erica is the coolest. All right, so I did this very transparent because I just want a hint of color. I don't want it to be a lot, just give it a little bit of background, dimension. All right, so since it's a little bit cool in here, I'm gonna torch it just to warm it up a little bit, prep my brush, kind of prime it a little bit so I'm not going in there with a dry brush. And then I'm just gonna meld it, and all I'm trying to do is get this surface covered. And I just want a very light melding of those colors. I want to be have I want to have separation. So this is what I want. I want there to be separation between the clear and the turquoise. If I over meld it, then all I've basically done is tint everything turquoise or aqua in this case. Now, you could definitely use your hands on this. I just really wanted to get it spread out pretty even and get a real pretty meld. So, I like that. All right, so that is your first step. What we're gonna do is let this cure. Hit it with the torch real quick. We'll let this cure and then uh, tomorrow we will come back and we'll do the second step. Okay guys, so it's been 24 hours. Our epoxy has set overnight. Uh, we're gonna move to the next step. Now, optimal results. If you have time, let your epoxy cure for two or three days. It just makes the next step come out just a little bit better. Also, I'm gonna show you how to do the next step using a torch. We are going to catch the alcohol on fire. So in saying that, Guys, be responsible. Make sure you cover your area with a non-flammable material. I have uh, aluminum foil down. Make sure that your work environment doesn't have anything laying around with it, uh, next to it that could catch on fire. Just be responsible. Now in saying that, you can also do this with a heat gun. If you do, you want your epoxy to be at least a week old. And the reason I say that is because you're gonna be putting direct heat on the surface for a longer period of time than what we use when we catch it on fire, 
there is a chance that you could scorch your epoxy by using the heat gun. If you do want to use the heat gun, I highly recommend that you go check out two YouTube channels, Artist Till Death and Clara Lawrence Art. I will put both of those links in the descriptions. Okay, so let's go to the next step. What we're going to be using are alcohol inks, and I'm not claiming to be an alcohol ink artist by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm blaming this all on Erica from ATD because she has absolutely got me hooked on this. I love, love, love this medium. I'm going to use today the Ranger alcohols, and those are going to be also linked in the description. You'll also be able to go to my website on the tutorial site, and all of the materials that I'm using are going to be linked there. So, when you do choose your alcohol inks, choose wisely. Inexpensive, cheaper versions of alcohol ink, you will know. You're going to pay what you get, get what you pay for. Because the really inexpensive alcohol inks are going to fade over time. You're going to put all this work into your piece and you don't want it to fade. So, use some really good alcohol inks. All right, here we go. Let's have fun. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with regular isopropyl alcohol, 91%. You can use 99. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of lay down a design. Doesn't matter what the design is. And you don't even have to have a design. You can just pour some on your, your surface, that's fine too. Uh, and then I'm gonna add, start adding some color. I'll link all the colors. I believe this is espresso. And I'm only gonna put just a little bit down. Guys, don't put too much paint, I mean too much of the alcohol ink down, because what'll happen is if you get big clumps of the alcohol, it's gonna coagulate. Now I'm gonna add some more alcohol to this. I'm just trying to kind of see where my colors are gonna go. And then I'm gonna add just a tad bit of turquoise. Again, I'm gonna link all these colors for you guys so you'll know what I'm using. All right, now I'm gonna come back in with some more alcohol. Now, as long as the alcohol doesn't go over your edge when you do this, all of the fire is going to stay on your surface. All right, I like to kind of tilt. Now, obviously, if you're doing this on a countertop and it's a big countertop, you're not going to be able to mix and mold and tilt and turn. All right. But since this is a little TV tray, Obviously, I have quite a bit of time and ability to turn it. All right, so here we go. Make sure everything is out of the way. This is where the magic happens. So as the alcohol starts to evaporate or is burned off, it's leaving some super cool designs on your surface. Look at this. Is that not so much fun? Now, like I said, I'm not a pro at this yet. Just give me time. <laughs> See how we have a little bit of thickness here? Because what's happened is I left color a little thick, so it's kind of got a coagulation there. I'm not really worried about that. I'm, I'm okay with that uh, because I'm going to be able to come in with some alcohol and I'm going to be able to kind of play with that. All right, I like this. This is just background noise, guys. We're not, this isn't, we've got a lot to do here. All right, so my surface, let it cool down just a little bit before we go to the next step. And the reason I wanna do that is because if I go on the surface and my surface is hot, my alcohol is gonna evaporate really quickly. So I'm just gonna let it cool down for just, I mean, I could touch it. It's not, it's not that hot, but I kinda want it to cool down just a hair before we go to the next step. Okay, here comes the fun part. This is my favorite. 
Now we get to get super creative. And this is going to be a really hard finish for me to walk away, Rhonda. So just let me know in the comments below when you think I should walk away. All right, here we go. All right, so alcohol, straight alcohol is going to act like an eraser. It's going to release whatever color is on the board. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. I came in with straight alcohol. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start opening up some areas. Now pay attention. See how when I drag my brush through, how it removes color and then it causes a line and what that line is it's the alcohol being pushed it's the colorant I'm sorry being pushed by the alcohol so I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'm actually going to let that cause me some little micro tiny veins now let's say this right here I don't like I'm just going to come in with some alcohol and then I'm going to come in with the rag and I can just take it off. So you don't have to leave the veins if you don't want to. You can actually come in and let it take your color off and then wipe off the residue. All right, so I really like that. And see how this little line, the second little line came in? Because I'm just pushing those colors. And I'm going to kind of move up here. All right. Now, right here, we talked about how I let the color be a little too thick. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to soften that out by adding more alcohol. And now see how I'm picking up color as I drag my brush? And the way that I'm picking up the color is also kind of causing me to make these little tiny veins. I'm going to come in here one more time. This time I'm going to come a little bit off. See how I'm causing another little vein? I like that. I'm going to really open this up a little bit, adding quite a bit of alcohol. I'm going to really soften that down. As I do, I'm picking up color on my brush. All right, so let's do this. Let's open up another spot. Let's come in. Let's come in here. See how that alcohol is opening up that color? And on the top, I'm causing a more distinct vein. But see how it caused a vein on both sides? If I like that, that's good. If not, I can come back in and soften. All right, so that's one little technique how you can come in and kind of play I'm going to show you what I really like to do also is come in now. I'm going to add a little bit of the alcohol just on the table. Okay. That's a dark color. And I'm going to also add one little drop of the turquoise. I'm going to come in with pure color now. There's no alcohol in this. It's just the pure colorant. And I'm going to start getting a little detailed. So this little area here, I want to put a really dark vein in it. So I'm going to come over. I'm going to add, pick up a little bit more. And I'm going to get detailed. Now, the reason I'm creating a highlight on one side is because that alcohol kind of pushed that other colorant out of the way. But that's okay. I kind of like that. And I'm just going to come in here with the turquoise and I'm going to add a fun line. Now I'm going to soften it by adding some alcohol. And 
I'm just going to play. I'm just kind of running that out. Now this, guys, is where y'all need to just play and practice your craft. And if it's anything like what it's done to me, it's made me appreciate the alcohol inks so much. I just love the fact that it's so relaxing. Now I'm going to come in here with straight alcohol and watch how it opens up this color. On one side, on the other side, it kind of gives me a vein. See that? And I'm going to come back on this side again. And I'm going to create another little vein. I feel like Bob Ross. See this little vein? We're going to give it some life. So, this is how you can get very artistic and create some really cool micro veins in your work. I think I'm going to bring in a little bit of turquoise right here. Let me think. I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of turquoise. And then I'm going to bring this vein out to be very light. And then I'm going to come back. Now, I'm going to come in now with pure alcohol. I'm going to clean my brush with alcohol. Just kind of taking that color out of there. Now I'm going to come back with just the alcohol. Now let's play with this vein right here and let's make it very soft. See how just by dragging alcohol back onto it, each time I get a little farther away, how I'm now really softened that vein out. Now I'm going to come back in here and create like a highlight. And then I'm going to come back in here. And all of that, guys, is just done with alcohol. There's no more color on my brush. I'm just kind of picking up color as I drag it. I'm picking up color. Now I have a little bit of brown on my brush because I went right here. I have a little bit of brown on my brush. So now I'm going to come in here and add just a shadow of a brown. Isn't that pretty? So, guys, this is how you can create detail over the background of the melded colors that we did. And again, like I said, this is, a, this is something that I could just come in here and play and play and play with for hours. Because what happens is because this is alcohol, I can literally go eat a sandwich, come back and reactivate all of this and play some more just by adding more alcohol. See how I took that vein and I softened it? Now I'm going to run a vein. I'm going to go from here and I'm going to just run a vein and I'm creating that vein with just a clear alcohol brush. See how that alcohol went through there and pushed all of that color away? I didn't have any color on my brush. Now I'm going to kind of come down and I'm going to create a second vein. And a third vein. And I can just keep playing and fading and blending. This is so much fun. What do you think? Think you're going to try this out? I think you should. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just keep playing. I'll show y'all just a little bit more footage, and then I'm going to show you the final piece. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to seal it. It is very important that you seal this before you pour the epoxy over it. 
And the reason is that if I go straight over the top now with epoxy, it's going to cause it to kind of reactivate and a lot of times it'll call if it's, cause it to move and to smear. But what'll also happen is it will mix with that epoxy and over time it could cause them to fade. So by sealing it with the Krylon archival spray, very important, it must be matte. It cannot be the gloss. And the reason is the gloss contains too much alcohol. If you spray that, again, the alcohol is gonna reactivate your colorants. So what I'll do is I will put a link to the archival spray in the comments below as well. And that way you guys will know the correct spray to use. All right, so everything's dry to the touch. We're gonna come over with the Krylon archival spray in matte. And we're gonna do a very, very soft uh, spray so that it seals it. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back over it with our epoxy. Okay, so the archival spray is dry. Now, even though it gives it a matte finish, the sheen is a very matte because the spray was a matte. As soon as we put the epoxy over the top, it's gonna bring back that gloss. So I'm not really worried about the matte finish being on here right now. So what I've done is I've mixed up Art Coat by Stone Coat Countertop. I did three ounces per square foot, so I've mixed up a little less than six ounces and added a little bit of secret sauce, which is the diamond dust. You can never have too many sparkles. Well, I guess you can, but not in my world. All right. It's a little cool in here. Hit it with some heat. All right, I, here we go. I'm using my hand again. So I'm gonna come in, use my hand, level all this out. Got a little blue in here. All right, so this is going to be the only layer of epoxy that I'm gonna need to do. I'm usually not a fan of just doing one layer of epoxy because usually my first layer is a, what I call my color coat and the color coat actually has additives in it, either mica powders or paste or spray paint or our dyes. And that kind of uh, compromises the integrity of the epoxy because we've added colorants. So I usually always do what we call a flood coat. But because I did the design on the board pre-epoxy, I only have to do one flood coat, which is what I just did. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll let this flood coat set for 24 hours and I'm gonna come back with the ultimate top coat either in gloss or in matte. Being that it's just kind of this alcohol ink look, I, I kind of like what it looked like in the matte finish, but I'm gonna let this cure and then I'll make that decision at a later point. I don't have to make that decision right now. In fact, I don't even have to cover this with ultimate top coat if I don't want to. The reason I'm choosing to do the ultimate top coat is because of the high level of durability that it gives. Um, so since this is going to be a TV tray, I'm gonna give it as a gift. I'm not really sure how they're gonna use it. They may, you know, just set it in the corner or they may really use it a lot. So I am gonna do the ultimate top coat. And the more I look at it, I don't know, I'm thinking I may leave it at the gloss and I may put the UTC gloss. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you do a matte or would you do a gloss? Let me know. All right, so I'm gonna torch this and I'm gonna call this a completed finish. What do you guys think? I love it. It's my first real alcohol ink project. So I see a lot of this in my future. So let me know, would you like me to bring more of this type of finishes to you guys? Um, let me know. So give me a thumbs up guys if I earned it. Subscribe to our channel. I'm so excited our channel is just growing and growing by leaps and bounds and I thank you. Also, all of these products, guys, are available on our website or we'll have a link 
that will show you where to get them. So go to rk3designs.com and check it out. Sign up for our newsletter for special promo codes and also our 2022 schedule will be posted by the end of this week. All right, guys, so you know what it is. Remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative. See you in the next video.